I'm going to talk a little bit about the reactions that I got from my students and how they behaved when they saw my natural hair. So, before you get started, please smash that like button and hit subscribe if this is your first time watching me. Now, if this is your first time watching, please let me know where you're from, where you, um, where you are with your natural hair journey. You can let me know that as well and we can chat a little bit more about that. So... Let me tell you what happened. So, I usually don't wear my hair. Um, yeah, I don't usually wear my hair uh, in a braid out. I usually have it in a bun on top of my hair. Wait, before I talk about that, I didn't even tell you what I'm doing with my hair today. So, uh, I did a hot oil treatment last night with, uh, well, you all know I don't really heat my oils. I put it on my scalp first and then... I use my natural body heat to get the oils all warmed up under the shower cap. So I used a mixture of black castor oil, the extra dark one, that's what I picked up when I went home to Trinidad. And I also picked up black seed oil. So since I've been here, since I've been living here in this new apartment, new town, new city, I have not been able to make my fenugreek oil, so I was just making something in the meantime until I make a new batch. So I mix these two together. The extra dark, uh, the extra dark black castor oil and this uh, black seed oil. So I, um, a lot of you have been telling me about black seed oil for a long time, and I was figuring why don't I try it out. So I grabbed this one and mix them together and I use them for a hot oil treatment so I put it in my applicator bottle which is covered in hair <laughs> right so I added it to my black to my applicator bottle I put it on my scalp and then I massaged I massaged my scalp with my massage my vibrating scalp massager Okay, so after I did that, I also I put it on my scalp and then I also put it on my hair, on the length of my hair. I wrapped them into these bantu knots, not very tight bantu knots, and then I put it in a shower cap. And under hair is steamy, so I did that last night. It's really hot under here right now. And then I'm gonna wash my hair. So I really, I'll be honest, I really wanted to wash my hair before I came on this live stream. But the time I woke up this morning, I was like, no, I have to come straight and do the live stream before I wash my hair. So anyways, let me get back to what I was saying. So usually I wear my hair in a bun when I go to school or when I go to, when I teach at school, because I'm teaching in China right now and I usually put my hair in four braids, as you all have seen, if you have seen some of my videos, if you haven't. Usually I put my hair in four braids, two in the front, two in the back. That's my lazy hair, go-to hairstyle. And then if I want to braid out, I just unbraid it. So, even if I do a braid out, I still put it back into, into, um, into one, into a bun. So, they don't really see my hair in full braid out. So, if you have any questions about me living in China here in the meantime... Let me know in the comments below. Uh, oh, tell me what black seed oil you use as well, if you do. All right, so yeah, so going back to what I was saying. So this is what happened last week. Actually, there was a day that I did a live stream, and my hair was in a side, in a braid out, but it was like swooped to the side. Let me show you the picture quickly, just now. One second, one second, one second. Let me find that picture. So I want to show you the picture quickly so you can have an idea of what my hair looked like. So my hair looked like this. Okay. I hope you could kind of sort of see. So my hair looked like this when I went to school. And then it also looked, so it looked like that as well. Okay. I hope you could sort of see. Right. And when I went to school, y'all everyone had lost their screw then they they had lost it <laughs> I'm like and i don't know i don't know if it was a good reaction was it a bad reaction i didn't know how to put it 
But I must tell you this, I had to hold my tongue. <laughs> because I think the natural reaction when people seem surprised or shocked by something is to, oof, is to just come out and be like, just say whatever's on your mind. But I had to remember, before I tell you how they reacted, I had to remember, hey, they have not seen this before. So I have to, I have to hold my tongue. Like what I, what I really wanted to say <laughs> based on their reactions. I had to hold my tongue. So, uh, yeah, remember, this is, you have, to, you have to remember when you're in China, you have to remember they see Chinese faces all day long. They see Chinese hair all day long. Now, Chinese hair is typically, I say typically, because I've seen Chinese hair with hair that looks like mine, by the way. So, I say typical with regard to the hair tends to be straight down, so it's straight or straight up. The boys, if they cut their hair, it usually sticks up, right? So, they're not used to seeing curly hair. They're not, seeing, not used to seeing hair that looks like ours, natural Hair that the way the way it falls, the way it they're just not used to it. So they're not used to seeing us, people of color, darker skinned people. Oh, I've seen people who look like me and look darker than me, so I don't understand why they stare at me. <laughs> but anyways, and that back to the point. Yeah. So they're not accustomed to seeing certain things, okay? So when they do see us. When they do see our hair, their hair, they lose, they lose it. They go bananas. So I walked into school that day. So that day was a Sunday. So I had done my live stream that day. I had gone to school. And when I got there, uh, I walked in and the stairs just started. The staring. I'm used to the staring. When I first moved to China, they stared a lot. Fine. In this town, they actually don't stare that much. But when I went to school... People were staring at me like... So, uh, there are American teachers working at this school too. So, they walked up to me and was like, Oh my gosh, you look beautiful. Mm. I wanted to say that, Don't I look too beautiful all the time? <laughs> but anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, Oh my gosh, I like your hair like this. You know? They said things like that. Um, that's what the Amer that was the American teachers. So, the students were in classes. And when they, when they came out of classes, Their jaws just dropped. They're like, Ife, oh my gosh, your hair looks Powerful. That was one of my students. She's like, yeah, I love your hair like this. She's like, you should wear your hair like this all the time. So that's the other thing I started getting. So I don't wear my hair in a braid out or a twist out because of the reactions that I get. Now, it's, that is kind of a bad way to approach it because they need to get used to seeing this. Because even on the TV, their TV shows that they watch, they're not used to seeing people with hair like ours. Or the if they do watch American TV shows, te American TV shows do not uh, represent us in a large capacity, you know? They don't represent women of with natural hair in... It's not, it's not regular TV for Western society. So could you imagine for... It's not a regular to see someone with naturally textured hair or curly textured hair in on television or in movies that's not normal it's becoming closer to normal but if it's not normal in western society why is it i was expecting them to or why do we sometimes expect chinese people who it's just generally a homogenous society where they constantly 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 see one race almost all the time in rep represented within their daily life and on TV. Why is it we expect them to react a certain way? But anyways, let me get back to the point. So, what else the students were saying? Uh, they were... So, some of them were just shocked. They just dropped, their jaws dropped and they were like, Whoa! Ethan! Because they call you... In our school, they call the teachers by their first name. So, they were like, Ethan! What is wrong? Well, they started saying this. They were like, what is wrong with your hair? I'm like, nothing's wrong with my hair. This is my hair. It was just so funny. Oh my gosh. But back to what I was saying with regard to being, how I'm approaching the exposure to my hair and how they're exposed to my hair. It's actually not good. 
I keep my hair wrapped up and in a bun or in braids so that they don't get distracted by my hair or they don't have those reactions. But I actually should show my hair more because uh, the more that they, I show my hair to them, they actually it becomes normal for them. It's it's kind of it's sort of normalized because when I first walk into the school and the, when the students start to see me. That reaction, it actually, after a while, they're like, oh, okay, cool, it's Ife, okay, cool, that's her hair, whatever, you know? So, after I started seeing a few more of them, and more of them were like, um, Ife, what did you do to your hair? I'm like, I didn't do anything, this is just how it is. There was even a student who lived in the America for seven years, and he was shocked by my hair. So, he lived in America, I can't remember what state he lived in. He lived in America, his English is actually very good, and he still wasn't exposed to hair like ours. So, it just goes to show we have no choice at this point in time to just show what our hair really looks like. Because don't tuck it away, don't hide it away, which is what I do. I really, because I, honestly, I don't like the attention. <laughs> I just don't. And I need to get over that. I need to, to cross that hurdle. <laughs> So eventually, I think more teachers as well started to come up to me and started to say, oh my gosh, you should wear your hair like this all the time, Ife. I'm like, oh, no, I shouldn't because the students get so distracted. Um, some of the parents were there. So it was a parent-teacher parent -teacher meeting. So some parents showed up as well. And they as well, they, I guess they were excited to talk to me. Uh, I don't know if it was because of my hair. I don't know. It could be because their student... They want some more attention for their students. I don't know. Uh, what else happened? So that was one day. And then I was I said, you know what? I will do I would have a, my hair and a braid out again. So that was a Saturday. And then I showed my hair again on I unbraided my hair. So I had it in a braid out again on Wednesday, I believe. Because remember I re-moisturized based on my hair regimen. I re-moisturized my hair in midweek, so I had it in a braid out for like a day before I re-moisturized it and so it was like much fuller than before. I didn't I don't have a picture of it, but my hair, if you see the picture that I showed you how I wore my hair on Saturday, my hair was more to the side. Now this time my hair is a braid out, so it's much bigger, it was humid a little bit, so it was much um much larger. I looked closer to a fro than before. And uh, the reactions were pretty much, even those students had seen my hair before, now it wasn't, it seemed a little bit more, more than before. So now teachers are asking like, how do you keep all that hair in a bun? Now they're trying to understand, how do you go from a bun to all of this hair? I'm like, my hair is magic, okay? Just deal with it. Just run with that, okay? <laughs> because when you try to explain, oh, my hair is curly, and then when the humidity comes in, it just gets bigger. Like, I don't have time to explain all that <laughs> to you. So I just say, hey, what? Curly hair is magical. Get with it. So <laughs> that's what I told my American teacher, American teachers who work with me in my office. And but then the students came again. They're like, wait, what did you do to your hair this time? I'm like, I did not do anything. The environment, the air, the heat, the the air, the water droplets in the air, they caused my hair to expand like this. I cannot, I do not, <laughs> I do not do this. So I spent my, I mean, I spent, I mean, it was cool because, um, I walk into classes, well, this week, in the middle, midweek, when I had my hair in a braid, a full braid out, I just walked into my classes, students were like, whoa, and in five minutes, they were over it, so, and at some point, <laughs> I got really angry with my students because they didn't do their homework that day, they're like, whoa, Ife, your hair got bigger when you got angry. <laughs> Hey, they, the, kid, the kids had me, they had me laughing. So it was cool. So that was that. And then at some point, the I was standing in front of the screen because they had these smart boards in their classrooms. And the kids were like, Ife, your hair is blocking the screen. <laughs> so I, they were just having a lot good laugh. So no, my hair was really blocking half the screen. It was, it was true. So <laughs> every time I gave them notes or I did a PowerPoint, I had to like step away. <laughs> Could you see? <laughs> But, I mean, y'all, I have to laugh. No, I have to laugh in the midst of all of it. I have to laugh now when I'm, like, relaying the story to you. Because when, like, if you like, uptight about every little reaction everybody has about curly hair or our hair, I mean, we will just be angry, bitter all the time about our hair. We can't be. We just shouldn't be, you know? It's just, it should be something fun. 
some young people learn about. Now, did people put their hands in my hair? That's probably what you might have been wondering. Which, funnily enough, they didn't. They, no one was like trying to touch it up or, or pull at it. And these are grown, somewhat grown kids. Most of them are... Actually, there's a, a 12 year old in one of my classes in high school. I don't know why, don't ask me. But most of these students are 15, 16, and uh, they pretty much they kept their hands to themselves. If they wanted to touch my hair, they didn't ask me. Maybe they touched it when they were standing behind me. Maybe, I didn't know, but I didn't feel it. <laughs> uh, but I mean, do you have any questions <laughs> about me living in China with regard to my natural hair, of course? And. Uh, that's pretty much it with regard to the reactions. Now, I'm definitely going to attempt to have my hair in a braid out more often. Not too often, but the usual midweek maybe and then a Friday. I'll probably do it once in a while and see how much they get used to. They get used to it. So let's see. Let's see. Let me see what you guys are saying so far. Elizabeth Wandfield says, Ife, love you girl, I finally made it here. Been working many 12-hour overnight sh shifts. I'm a nurse and have been missing you. Aww. I'm glad I, I, ca I caught you too. So, Adele, hello, Miko. I'm hi there. I've been looking for a huge aloe plant like yours. No luck yet. So, everyone's been asking me about where I've been finding that aloe plant. Yo, I'm in China. I buy it in China. Ah, uh, Just Mayful says, finally getting to see you live, the boy. How do you pronounce that? <clears throat> okay, so you asked, do you find it harder to get natural products in China? Um, that's a good topic I can talk about. Um, it's not difficult. There is a, there is a natural, a curly hair, naturally curly hair group in China. There are some people who bring products to China. <laughs> there are some people who bring products um to China. <laughs> yeah, me laughing. And they sell them here when they bring them. So, but they mark up the prices, like double the prices sometimes. So what I do, I try my best to bring stuff before. I try to bring stuff with me. Now what I didn't do, which is what I forgot to do, I forgot to grab a leave-in conditioner. Before I came home, but I'll get one soon. I have en I think I have enough to last me for a little bit longer. But I'm gonna try. Everybody talks about this Cantu, Cantu leave-in conditioner, so I'm gonna try that. See how it works with my hair. I've seen some of those things here, and the prices are really ridiculous. I guess if I get extremely desperate, I might order while I'm in China. But generally, if you need something, you can get it. It's just that you have to pay. A much higher price. So I suggest if you ever coming to China to bring it with you. Bring some bring whatever you need with you. <clears throat> it's not harder, it's just more expensive to get natural hair products. Adele says, love the black seed oil. I take it as well to help me sleep. I haven't taken it internally yet. I've only taken it have it on my hair. Michelle Wilde. Ife, love your channel and love your DIYs. Thank you. I really need to come with some more DIYs though. Um, how's the weather in China? So, the temperature starting to drop, unfortunately. Uh, but blue sky, sunny day. Today's not one of those days though. Today's a little bit overcast. A little bit more pollution in the air today, unfortunately too. Uh, hey, if you're watching, thumbs up the video. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, if you're watching for the first time, subscribe. Oh, the weather, the weather, but today is overcast, uh, but we had a, quite a few blue skies this week, a lot, very warm weather, the temperature was 28 degrees Celsius, converted to Fahrenheit for yourself, okay, um, huh, October 2016, what are you talking about, Lakia, is that how long you've been natural, is that how long you've been watching my channel, what, Okay, so like, yeah, woolly textured hair in China, yeah? They're not used to seeing that. Miko, maybe they stare at you because you're very beautiful. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I just think I'm regular, people. I'm, I'm normal. I'm just 
average. I just, that's what I think. Angie says, yes, powerful. That's what I think about, well, that's what my students said. She was really expressive that day. I'm like, girl. <laughs> uh, Sarai says, hey, she's sending hi to everybody. Yeah, these kids. Um, Angie says, it's kind of the same with older white women or white people here. I'm like, didn't you live through the 70s, girl? Yeah, so sometimes I wonder about that too. I'm like, Amer some Americans who have never seen certain things, I'm like, you'll need to get out some more. You'll need to explore. Stop staying in your 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 small circle. <clears throat> I shouldn't say I'm just American. There are people all over the world who've never seen us, they've never seen our hair, never interacted with us or people with our hair. The question is, do you have pants on this time? Something like pants. I have on a skirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, so, do you have any more questions for me? You can ask me anything. Uh, I don't think I have anything else to cover uh, with regard to being a natural, being, being curly haired or be having natural hair in China. Uh, it's basically, I've, I mean, I have not had a really bad react. Oh wait, there was this one time, there was this one time, this little child looked rather scared. Very, very scared <laughs> looking at me. I had my hair in a braid out and the child literally like, Whoa! <laughs> and they saw me because I came around the corner. <laughs> like a year and a half ago when I was in the first city that I was living in. <laughs> I came around the corner and I was like, Ugh! I was scared. They were so scared. <laughs> oh gosh. So Tiffany says she's loving all, but that child was like maybe five, not even five, maybe four years old. <laughs> oh gosh. I've seen adults react like that to her, by the way. Just like, Ugh! like, geez, relax. I'm not jumping. I'm not going to bite you. <laughs> all right. So Tiffany says, loving all the DIY videos. Thank you. Adele, I didn't catch what you are doing with the oils. Oh, I did a hot oil treatment with those oils. So um, I have those two oils here. I have the black seed oil and uh, the extra dark Jamaica black castor oil. I mix those two together. And I throw it, I put it in an applicator bottle and I put it in my hair. I massage my scalp and then I put on a shower cap to get the heat going under there. So that's, so last week, sorry, last week I didn't wash my hair. I was just feeling real lazy last week. Um, so last weekend I wasn't, didn't wash my hair. So the weekend before that I did. An aloe pre poo. So this weekend it's I'm gonna do the hot oil. Remember I told you all I interchange. So aloe pre poo, then hot oil. Every week it's like that. So aloe, aloe pre poo one week, the next week, hot oil treatment. Then aloe pre poo and then hot oil treatment. So that's how I go with um regard to starting my wash day. So when I'm finished here with you guys, I'm gonna wash with conditioner. So I'm gonna co-wash. And then, and then I'm going to uh, braid my hair, style my hair, put in my moisturize with my flaxseed gel. Ooh, you know what video I'm going to put out next week? Talking about flaxseed gel, I'm going to show you how I defrost or how I thaw out my flaxseed gel. I used to thaw it out where uh, I just take it out of the freezer. Because I remember I told you I store my flaxseed gel because I make a huge batch. I store it in the freezer in ice cube, tr ice cube trays and then I throw it in a bowl. Like, so if I take out, I take out how much of it I need for that week, I throw it in a bowl and let it thaw out. But what happens is the gel separates from the water and then you end up with a watery kind of gel thing when you, th when you thaw out the ice cubes, the flaxseed cubes. And I never liked that. So by accident, when I was in Trinidad, I found a way to, to thaw it out. So I'm going to show you how I thaw out flaxseed gel in my next video that's going to come out. 
Tuesday or Wednesday. All right. All right. So let me see. Let me see. So do you do you braid out? So your braid out is typically four braids. Yeah, that's my lazy, lazy braid out. I used to do more braids. I used to do like three, at least three on the side and three on the side in the front. And then I used to do about four on the back here and then four on the back here. So, so that actually makes a more defined braid out, uh, you know. And uh, I don't do that anymore because y'all, I be trying to keep my braid outs on my wash day, I be trying to keep it short as possible. I don't have time for like so many brain outs, you know. I I don't I don't know if being so lazy with my hair is a good thing. But it's been working so far, you know. <clears throat> Alright, it's Jade says, I've heard a lot about the dust from the factories in China polluting the air there. Does that affect your hair negatively? Sorry if you've covered that already. Um I've actually never talked about that. If it's if it's affected my hair, huh, that's a good question. Well, yeah. So basically, talking about the let's talk about the pollution in China. What is what is caused by? First of all, I watched a documentary just before I moved to China, so that scared the living daylights out of me. <laughs> there's a there's a um a doc documentary on China that's actually banned in China. Uh, it was initially shown in China called Under the Dome. If you ever get a chance to watch that documentary, it's a really good documentary. So it's called Under the Dome. And I believe the person who made that, uh, and who made that documentary, they were actually paid by the government to do, create a documentary. But then when they showed and then they released the documentary. When they released it, all of China watched, they watched it in like 2.5 seconds. And that video went from zero views to almost a billion views within a few days. And um, it sort of got, it's like China is so isolated with regard to the information that they're fed. Not us, because we have access, Amer uh, not Americans, but foreigners, and, and anyone from outside of China, we know that information is out there and we can find it, but for Chinese, they are blocked from getting certain information. So, some of them didn't even know why the sky is gray all the time. Some of them don't know why you can't clearly see the mountains. Like, they think the air that they see is normal. So when this documentary came out, they were like, oh my gosh, it's because... So, any documentary, they talked about what is what causes the, the air and... It's not just the factories. Y'all, China makes products. They make everything that you possibly need. Almost everything. Probably 98% of everything we need is made in China. So you just have to imagine the scale for the world. They make it for themselves and they make it for the world. So you can imagine these factories are pumping out um, products and and materials and anything that you need for on a on a on a high scale so the pollution and the the energy that they use so they use a lot of coal in their factories still which is unclean energy so it produces a lot of um dust particles in the air it's called pm 2.5 i think so it's tiny black particles that actually are not good for you to inhale so i wear a mask usually so that documentary helped me to realize, hey, you know what? You're going to China, deal with it. You're going there, so you have to protect yourself. You have to wear a mask, and you have to understand why the air is the way it is. Where I live now, it's not as bad as the it's not as bad as Beijing. Beijing is horrible. There are people like one of my coworkers said he lived in Beijing for a while. I know this is that has nothing to do with natural hair. I know, just now I'm getting to the point. So <laughs> Um, yeah, he said when he lived in Beijing, there were some points that it was so bad that when he was brushing his teeth, his gums would be bleeding from his, because his health was getting so affected by breathing in the air, because he wasn't wearing a mask, apparently. But, um, if you're living in China, or you plan to live in China, the air is really bad. You just have to wear a mask, and there's just no other choice. If you want to live the rest of your life, you have to, you know, so, back to what the question was, which was, 
How does it affect your hair? Now, because I don't live in Beijing where the air is so bad, if I lived in Beijing, I think I would have, like, you'd actually have, there would actually be an effect on my, and um, my hair would be affected by the pollution or the air pollution. I'm not saying my hair is not po not affected by the pollution where I live. I just think it would be worse, so I would just see clear effects of it, you know? But so far, I haven't seen anything drastically abnormal with my hair with regard to pollution and my hair being exposed to it. Boy, sorry, that was a long explanation. Sorry. I talk a lot. Yes, I know. Thank you. Okay, Adele asked, what's in your aloe? Pre-poo. So someone answered for me. Uh, Sarai said, yeah, I blend the aloe. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so I, I grab a leaf from my aloe plant, which I showed last week, actually, on my live stream. I, I cut a piece of the leaf. I blend it. I strain it with a muslin cloth or a cheesecloth. I strain it to get make sure I don't get any aloe particles in my hair. Then I put it in my hair, just the aloe alone, and then I cover my hair with the oils. You could mix the oil with... You could mix the oil with... um. The aloe, you could mix aloe and oil and then put it in your hair. But what I do, I just add the aloe on my hair and then I follow up. I follow up with an oil, and then I throw on my shower cap and I let that. I leave that overnight until the next day. Yeah. So I also have a video as well showing exactly what I do. Gosh, Sarah, you on fire today. Thank you. Anisha says hello there. Hey girl. All right, Miko. Speaking of flaxseed gel, it gives my hair such a crunch. I don't like the way it makes my hair feel. Does it make your hair feel crunchy? No, it does not. The way I do my my moisturization situation, <laughs> um, I don't uh, I don't get a crunchy hair. And a lot of people have told me that if you follow the way I moisturize my hair, if you do it exactly like that, you really wouldn't have a problem. So what I do, I will tell you now. I put my it in layers. So I put the flaxy gel. On damp hair, flaxy gel. Then I put the leave-in conditioner. So for me, I use Tresemme Naturals as a leave-in. You can use your leave-in conditioner that you prefer. It doesn't matter. And then you put that on. So that's second. And then I put the third thing on. I put shea butter. So I'm back to shea butter during the summer. Some for some reason, hair oil ain't doing nothing for me right now. My hair texture has seemed to have changed. Seems it seemed to have changed. Oh my gosh, my English. It changed a little bit. Um. Yeah, so my hair is not staying as moisturized with the oils right now in the summer heat. So I'm back to using shea butter in the summer. So back to what I was saying. Flaxseed gel, leave-in conditioner, then shea butter. Smooth all that in one at a time. And then when you're done, braid up your hair or twist your hair however you want. Let it dry completely. And then you shouldn't have a crunch. You should just have, when you're ready to take your hair down, your hair would be so silky, so moisturized. It's just going to be, oh, every time I unbraid my hair, I'm like, oh, I just love my hair. Okay, let's go back. Sorry. So, no, I don't get crunch when I use Flaxy Gel. Adele says, thanks. I'll check it out. Have you ever used chippy powder in your hair regimen? No, I haven't. I saw a video on that chibi powder, but I haven't. <clears throat> I haven't used it as yet. No, I think I might have to find it. Elizabeth asked, not an exact hair question. How do you take your Lugol's iodine, and will you do an updated day of eating? Please, are you vegan or vegetarian? Ooh, that's a lot of questions there, girl. All right, yes, I. Still take Lugol's iodine. I bought another batch. I bought another batch um, and I picked it up when I went home. Uh, Lugol's iodine. So if you all don't know what that is, it's really just a supplement and it comes in like drop. You, It comes in a dark bottle and you just, it's drops you put in your water on an empty stomach early in the morning. I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, so I you take it to make sure that I keep those cysts at bay because they actually help with that. It also is good for 
I mean, energy levels. It's good to balance your hormones. It's good to uh, reduce uh, hair loss and hair fall. That sort of thing. So I take I take that, and it's something I plan to take the rest of my life. So it, it's um, based on my research. We don't get enough iodine in our diets, and that's one of the ways to get it. All right, so do I still take it? Yes, I do. I take it in a glass of water every morning. I take about four drops, five drops, in a glass of water every day. And will you do an updated day of eating? I don't think I ever did a day of eating. But it's funny enough. I said I would show you again what I still use to ensure that my hormones stay balanced. I don't, my body is not affected by imbalanced hormones and my body it gets the right nutrients. So, like on my Instagram, I showed you all that I bought recently bought chia seeds for the first time, and I started taking it for the first time. So, those are one of the things I still take flaxseed gel. To me, it's not flaxseed gel. I still use flax seeds in my morning smoothie. So that's something I will never stop as well. Those are actually great for your know, hormonal health too, and hair and all that. Uh, well, I, so yeah, I want to do another video on that as well and what I eat. So thanks for the, thanks for pointing that out or re the reminder. Are you vegan or vegetarian? Far from far. I am not vegan or vegetarian. I don't buy. You know, it's funny. When I go to the grocery in China, at least I don't buy meat. I don't know why. I just don't. But I'm not vegetarian. If I, if I go out to a restaurant, I will eat meat. At school, we we um we get lunch. We get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they have meat, and I would try like if they do like um what do you call it baked wings, I would have that. If they do like stewed chicken, I would have that. And I would try it out because I I mean. The food is not actually not bad. You can probably see it in my face. <laughs> I'm eating quite a bit lately. <laughs> um, yeah, but I know I'm not. I'm not vegan. I'm not vegetarian. I'm just not. I just would probably eat meat once or twice a week. It's not. I don't feel as though I have to have meat every day. And if I do have meat, I don't feel as though I have to have a lot of it. You know. So yeah, eat meat. Uh, but I'm, I'm not vegan. I'm not vegan. There was a point in time when that's all I ate. I ate a lot of fruits. I was eating raw till four, so I would eat lots of bananas in the morning. I would eat, and then I would eat, um, throughout the day I would eat some popo or papaya, some people say. And I don't do that so much anymore, so now I just do a morning smoothie with some, a couple bananas. And I would throw in all my different seeds, whether it be my Brazil nuts and my flax seeds, some sesame seeds, some chia seeds now. I just throw that all in, some dates, I put it all together in one big smoothie. Some of my fenugreek seeds that I've sprouted after soaking them for my hair, I throw all that. I mean, it's just one big, some goji berries, like I just, it's just, yeah. So I put that in my smoothie and then lunchtime I, I eat cooked food and then... The end of the day, sometimes I stay back for dinner at school, or sometimes I come home. Y'all, dinner is one kwai, or one renminbi, or one titi dollar, if you know. <laughs> it's, very, it's very cheap, very, very cheap. Uh, let me see. Lunch is one US dollar. It's like, it's really cheap. Hi, class act. Hey, girl, how you doing? All right, so Curly Maya asked, anybody knows where I can get cheap ap what aptamin ap apotamin what che what is that syrup cheap? Okay, so Curly Maya said I saw the video on chibi powder, and they say it smells like castor oil. Some of you ordered the chibi powder. Uh, What just the bull gonna see? What just now? Y'all gonna see these brands? Oh, just now y'all gonna see these brands putting Chebe powder, Chebe infused, in their product title. <laughs> yeah, so apparently that's some big, a big, uh, what do you call it? Trend that's going around now. Um, will I try it out? A lot of you asked me. Um, maybe, maybe. It's not, um, 
I'll have to buy it if I'm gonna and have it shipped across China. I don't think I want to. The price to ship things, not a good idea. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think I would try it anytime soon. Let me just be honest. I don't think. I don't Whenever I go home, maybe if I see it, maybe I'll try it. But or maybe if I'm going home, I'll order it so it will be there and turn out by the time I get it. But other than that, no. Yo, it's 48 minutes. I've been here for long. I haven't had a live stream this long in a long time. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna run. Let me go wash my hair, man. <laughs> All right, so Sarai asked me, how often do you do African threading? Y'all, I haven't done, I'll be honest, I haven't done it since I did that video. I'll probably do it when the temperature starts to drop, though. Um, because to me, what's the point of doing it if it's not going to stay stretched? If I do it when it's humid still, my hair's going to be one big puff ball whilst I stretch my hair. I want it to stay stretched when I stretch it out. That's my thinking, at least. I said I would have done it when it was springtime, and springtime came, and I went to Thailand and Malaysia. So I was like, nope, I'm not threading my hair. And I came back, didn't thread my hair. Um, what happened? And then summer hit, um, it's more humid, my hair puffs up. I was like, eh, eh, I didn't do it. And then I said I would do it, but I would do it when, I think I would do it when, when fall starts to come. But fall seems to be coming early because the weather dropped this week and I was like, brr, it's cold, you know, so we'll see. All right. <laughs> but you know, I'm going now. So I don't, I don't like to have the, the, the live streams too long anymore. All right. So y'all, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for the questions. You asked some great questions. Thank you for sticking out with me if you're watching the replay. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the live stream and our interaction. Don't miss a live stream next time. And you can definitely not miss it by hitting that notification bell so that you can get notified. Who got notifications? Who was part of the notification squad this morning? Huh? Well, this tonight. Sorry, it was nighttime for you. It's morning for me. It's Saturday morning. Uh, so if you're part of the notification squad, thank you for that. Uh, I am going to enjoy my, the rest of my weekend and hope you all too. Thanks, Alice. Yeah. Y'all have a great weekend, okay? Mwah! Mwah, 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 mwah. See you.